Ready to unlock your true potential and manifest the life of your dreams? Then I've got something super special just for you. Our mind-blowing self-love and manifestation courses. Picture this. A journey of self-discovery where you'll find a deep well of self-love and acceptance. Say goodbye to self-doubt and hello to unshakable confidence. Our courses are designed to help you embrace your worthiness and tap into the incredible power of self-love. But that's not all. We'll also dive deep into the transformative world of manifestation. You'll learn proven tools and techniques and strategies to align your thoughts, beliefs, and actions with your wildest dreams. So get ready to create the success, happiness, love, and abundance that you deserve. So what are you waiting for? Head over to candywashington.com backslash courses to get started. Again, that's candywashington.com backslash courses. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm, I think there's a little bit of an echo, maybe. Oh, let's see. Can you, is it okay or no? Let me see. Um, I'm going to try. What about this? Sorry. Okay. No, Let me know if this is better. Um, I think that's better. If not, I can try doing something else. Let me see. I think, I think that's better. Okay, perfect. <laughs> awesome. Okay, no worries. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm Candy Washington, the host of The Self Life, and I cannot wait to help you lead a more joyful life. So before we dive into today's episode, which will be a very inspiring and powerful conversation with Jaden Haley, if you need additional support, you can grab our free self-love guide down below. Check out our courses on self-love, lifestyle design, manifestation, if you want to manifest love, more abundance, whatever you want, check it out down below. Join our Patreon community and also be sure to like, subscribe, and share if you find this valuable and to create more of a community. So with that, let's dive right on in. So on today's episode, we have Jaden Haley, who is the perfect example of fashion meets wellness. She has brought both of her skills in styling and living a healthy lifestyle, self-love, and manifestation to her audience. And she's also the founder and the host of the Wellness and Lifestyle podcast, Busy Yet Pretty. So welcome, Jaden. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That was such a beautiful description. And thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. So before we dive in, because I want to ask you a little bit more about yourself and what started you on your wellness journey, but I was listening to your podcast. And one affirmation that you said was, I am peacefully living the life I am meant to live. And yeah. that just hit like that mm-hmm. hit different. Of and course. I felt like it was I was like meant to hear it because I feel like you, you like you receive messages when you're ready to receive them. And so one affirmation I had been doing lately was, you know, I am living in my highest timeline. I am living in my highest timeline. So that affirmation just like hit different for me. So thank you so much for that. Of and course. So- and I love that so much. That's such a beautiful <laughs> affirmation. But it's it's so funny because I swear when you start affirming things in your mind and believing your own reality, you will see outside things attract to you and everything starts falling into place. So I just love how you said that. Yeah, it's the best. So do you want to share with us a little bit more about yourself and how you got started on your own self-love and manifestation journey? Of course. Hi, I'm Jane Haley, the host of the wellness podcast, Busy Yet Pretty. And honestly, I started with my self-love journey and my wellness journey from having so many little hardships in life, such as my bullying experience and with my eating disorder, where I felt my lowest. And I know deep down that I am meant to live a good life. Everyone is here to met. Everyone's here on earth to live a good life. So I just knew it was time to change my life around. So that really was something that prompted my wellness journey. I love that. And was there a particular obstacle you talked about your eating disorder and what was the thing right before that so my bullying experience so in middle school and high school i experienced being bullied and that was something that really took a toll on my social skills my self-love and everything went just plummeted to be honest and it took a lot of time to regain that and really realize that 
this is so temporary and in the moment nobody really feels that because it feels like that's the only thing happening and that's kind of your only reality but it's so good to realize that things pass and that was something that really prompted my self-love and wellness journey was having those experiences and what were some of the the tools and techniques that you used to overcome that because i think a lot of us can identify that with being bullied or feeling less than or feeling like an outsider like i know for me i struggle a lot with the feeling of belonging like what group do i belong with you know do i belong to my family even do i belong to this group of friends that you know do i belong to this you know audience and i think bullying really makes you think I don't belong. There's something wrong with me. There's no place that I fit. So what were some of the things that you used to start to feeling more like, you know, I do belong and I do fit and there's nothing wrong with me? Definitely. And I have to just say, I love how you use the word belong because that is something that I feel a lot of us, almost everyone in this world struggles to find where do we fit in. So belonging is such a highlighted word, I want to say. So I love that you said that. Uh, um, I definitely had felt like an outsider for middle school, high school. And even, I mean, to this day, you, you still, everyone wants to find where do they belong. And I think it really centers down to self-discovery and finding what are you truly happy in, what environment. And it's really important to step back and take a look at your environment because you are ultimately a product of your environment. So That was something that I really had to make sure to dial in on when I was like recovering from my eating disorder and from being bullied where what, what am I trying to fit in? What am I wanting to do from this? What's the outcome? And I feel like with being bullied, that was something I felt really as an outsider because I mean, people are making you feel like an outsider and you have no choice but to feel that way. So something that I really had to find out about myself is what do I truly love about me? What is my worth? And that was so small to me. My worth was so small, my value. And once I began to build that up, I realized that what people were saying, what people were trying to make me feel that truly didn't matter. And that wasn't actually the truth about me. And that was just people having um, a reflection of themselves show. Exactly. Exactly. I love that you said it was a reflection of them because usually when people bully you or make you feel less than, it's really them projecting their own insecurity and their own low self-esteem onto you. And then when we don't have that foundation of self-love, we then internalize it. We then think, well, then there must be something wrong with me when the truth is there's actually something wrong with them. And I know, uh, and I love that you brought up when I said belonging, like I uh, was talking to like my own therapist and we were talking about my sense of belonging. And she sent me to this really beautiful clip by Brene Brown. And Brene Brown was like, you know, she was talking to Maya Angelou and Maya Angelou said, you know, I found my peace when I realized I belong to Maya. I belong to me. And that's something that I just like really hit home and really sort of was a shift for me where I was like, I belong to Candy. This is where my, my home is me. And when I realize that I belong to me, then it doesn't matter what anybody else says because I can always come back home to me. Wow. And then from that place, I attract people who feel like home that, because I know that I belong to myself, right? That was absolutely stunning. And I will be now thinking that <laughs> all the time and telling people that because that was yes. such a beautiful example. And it's so true where when you find yourself, you will attract the right people. When you, Mm -hmm. of course, sometimes like before you have your self-discovery journey and your wellness journey and self-love journey, you kind of have to have those hardships to realize, oh my gosh, this is not what I want. And these are not the people I want in my life. And as much as hard it is to say, but like those hardships are a stepping stone to finding you. And I think finding you is the most beautiful thing because when you are so proud of yourself and confident in yourself and you find true peace in yourself, is when you will attract the right people to you. Because when we are lost and not knowing who we are, we are letting and have no, we have no wall up. And we're letting those negative people, negative energy and negative experiences come to us because we're not having our self-worth, our self-value and knowing who we truly are. So I just love that example. And it is so true. 
when you truly dial into who you are, you will receive the right opportunities, the right people. So I love that. Absolutely. And, and just like you said, dialing to like who you are, it's when your foundation is internal. It's yourself. It's your intrinsic value, your intrinsic worthiness, your intrinsic divinity. Whereas when you have the low self-esteem or you're getting your self-worth from outside of you, it's, it's always an eternal chaos because you're looking to, you know, the people at school or Instagram or your parents or your siblings or media, whoever it is, to inform you how you feel about yourself. Definitely. So, and, and I feel I'm like speaking. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Yes. Uh, but I feel like seeking from others, that can be where people will be telling you not the truth sometimes. And of course, we want to attract the right people, but people who, again, with the reflection of themselves, who may be struggling with their own thing, may be telling you something that is going to try to dim your candle to make theirs brighter. So when you actually stop seeking from without but seek within is when you're actually going to find the truth. But I definitely want to hear what you were saying, though. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot now, but no, but that oh, is, no, you're fine. Jump in. Like This is great. But I love um, your analogy about the light and the candle because – I sometimes think about that myself where it's like, well, if I'm shining bright and another person is shining bright, then when we come together, that increases our brightness, right? Think about two candles. When two candles come together, it's even brighter. But if I'm shining bright and someone's in their darkness, then my light is going to disturb their darkness. And wow. instead of wanting to shine like me, they're going to want to extinguish my light to make themselves feel better in their darkness. Oh my gosh. Perfectly said. Exactly. Mm hmm yeah, I saw this um, clip as well from uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes, who I absolutely love. And he was doing a, a sermon around, you know, um, it's not that people don't like you. Because he's like, you've been such a great person. You've been so nice and people still aren't nice to you. He's like, it's not that they don't like you. It's that the anointing on your life disturbs them. As, and, that's, exactly. and, and that's really what it is. I got goosebumps when I when I when I heard him say that because it's so true. It's not that they don't like you. It's not that they hate you. It's that your shine, the anointing of who you are, disturbs something in them that makes them feel less than. That's why hurt people hurt people. That's why bullies usually bully people that secretly they are jealous of and they admire and they wish they were like. And instead of saying, and when you work on self-love and self-esteem and your own confidence, when you see another person shining, instead of saying, well, I need to bring, I need to bring you down a peg or two so I can feel better about myself. You, instead, you think, wow, that person really inspires me to up my game. Definitely. You know? It's either it's only the situation with two lit candles or two dim ones. So that's exactly <laughs> what it is. I, I love how you said that. Yeah. So I, I also love how you um, sort of marry self-love and manifestation as well. So do you want to share with us, you know, how do you define manifestation? And then what are some of the tools and techniques that you use on your own manifestation journey? Definitely. When I think of the law of attraction, of course, which is manifestation, I think of a whole of how what you attract, what, what you believe you will attract. So whether that's good or bad. So you can be thinking negatively, you will attract negative. If you think positively, you will attract positive. But when I think really of manifestation, that is where I think it's time for you to put in the work and the action for you to get the positive. So totally thinking, removing the negative from your head. So when you think of the law of attraction, that's more of a rule in, in my head of this is what, this is how it works. This is the law of attraction. If you want to manifest, manifest the life that you want, this is in your hands and start beginning to think positively and you will attract the positive. And I think like the law of attraction and manifestation is a mindset more of just a rule book of where, okay, do this today, check, do this today, check, not feeling like it's steps and things you have to do every single day, but rather just living fully in that, like embodying that mindset, embodying that feeling where it's more of your life your overall mindset, your overall life. So thinking positively, seeing the good, stop pointing out the bad and mm -hmm. more stop living in the past, but more living in the present and the future. So I think when you begin to let go of things that are built up inside of you and have just a fresh start, it's where you're able to actually manifest the life you want. And some things I do in my everyday routine is again, like it's not a check 
do this and I'm going to manifest this, but more of how do I feel every day? So some things that I fully just embody manifestation in is thinking, what am I grateful for? I'll see, I'll see a bird and I'm like, I love it's chirping. I'm just grateful for that. Being mindful in your overall day is something going to pursue all your manifestation so much further than just thinking, okay, I need to do this today. Think about this. I need to put this on my vision board. That's, that's making you feel like a chore rather than an exciting, just embodying that feeling again. Like I really like to think of the word like embodying, like the, just it, it, you will go so much further when you actually feel it inside of you rather than, rather than just seeing on pen and paper as a task. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like I, like for me with manifestation, I, I think of the law of attraction as more of sort of like a mindset, but also more like a lifestyle. Like I, I'm choosing to feel good. But just like you said, with like the belief and like embodying the wish fulfilled or embodying becoming the manifestation is really um, the law of assumption, which is like, what is your belief system? So I love using like the two of those to come together to really be powerful because it's exactly what you're saying. You know, it's not about checking things off as a chore. It's about how do I feel? What thoughts am I thinking? You know, what feeling state of consciousness am I embodying? Am I embodying the person that knows her her worth, knows her value, know that abundance is for her, she is loved? Or am I embodying that negative state of I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, nothing works out for me? And I love that. And I agree. Like, I do the same with, like, the different tools and techniques I don't like to do it as like, I have to do this in order to get something because that kind of misses the point. It's more like, I want to do this because it just makes me feel good. It gets me in that good feeling space. It gets me in that embodying the wish fulfilled. So I might, you know, script at night or in the morning, you know, like, thank you, God, or thank you, dear diary, like whatever resonates with people, you know infinite spirit, whatever, you know, whatever people resonate with and like script out like a day in my dream life, you know, the life I'm meant to live or do like affirmations. Like we talked about at the beginning of the episode, that beautiful affirmation you had, you know, I'm peacefully living the life I'm meant to live. Like that's so gorgeous. What a gorgeous affirmation, right? So having those different affirmations. And I also love doing like visualization, like being in there, seeing myself in there, and then inner conversations as well is really great. So I agree with you 100%. You know, manifestations really is about embodying the state of the wish fulfilled, becoming, you know, the version of you who already is and already has what you want. It's not about checklists and chores and trying to get something. Because I think a lot of times people think, oh, I'm going to manifest a man. I'm going to manifest a car. I'm going to manifest a house. I'm going to manifest this money. And then once I get it, then I can feel good about myself. But it's actually the opposite. Once I know that I'm worthy and deserving of everything I want, simply because I want it and I'm here and the divinity that lives in, in me allows me to call it in, then it all comes. You know, it's not, you know, in order to be worthy of this, I have to get it. It's I'm already worthy of it. Therefore, I deserve to have it. Exactly. And that's what in that space. That is so perfectly well said because it is so true. Again, it's like when it's so cliche, but like the, you have to love yourself before you love someone else. And I say like cliche things are popular for a reason because <laughs> it's either the listener is, you can either listen to what's saying or you can just let it pass through your head being cliche. But mm -hmm. it's all true where it's like, once you actually love yourself, you can love someone else. But it's like, again, it's an example, kind of how you were saying, though. But if you were in a relationship where you went into it, you don't love yourself and you're thinking, I'll be happy when I'm in a relationship. You get in the relationship. They end up cheating on you, breaking your heart. You're already so much more broken than you entered that relationship. So how do you expect to be confident to leave that relationship knowing that there's better out there instead of just settling for that person? Because that's where you have to love yourself. You have to find what you, you have to be happy and fulfilled. As you, as you said, I love the word fulfilled. You have to be fulfilled before saying, oh, I'll be happy when. When you say I'll be happy when is right there is just an excuse that you're not taking time to actually find who you are right there because it you'll never actually be happy when you achieve that. Yeah, you may get temporary happiness, but it's not eternal happiness. When you get that dream car of yours, it's not going to bring you the internal 
happiness and self-love and healing. It's not going to bring you healing. Um, your dream, your dream job, it's not going to bring you healing and self-love. Yes, it may make you happy temporarily, but it's not going to bring that internal happiness. So always it's so important to just it, like address the self-love and self-love journey head on and any healing that needs to be done right away, then putting it off saying, I will do this when, because it's never going to happen. You'll never be able to fully tap into wanting to heal and wanting to feel better and wanting to have self-love for yourself. If all you keep doing is putting it off and saying, I'll be happy when. So I just think it's so important to face it head on, face the problems that you have, face the healing journey that you need to heal. Do all those things before thinking, before going into something saying, this will heal me or this will bring me happiness. Absolutely. And, and, and also I'll be happy when it puts the power in somebody else's hands, you know, and it's self-love to me is really realizing that you're the authority on you and that your power of self-esteem of self-worth to manifest or whatever, to heal, you know, to love yourself comes from within, you know, and once that comes from within, then nothing and no one has the power to give it, but nothing and no one has the power to take it away either. That's why when we get into the relationship subconsciously, because we think this person gives me my value, what you're really thinking in the back of your mind is I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy. So then we start to have those insecurities run. And then that is what then projects. Then they start ghosting. Then they start cheating. Then it's hot and cold. And we're like, why is this happening? Well, it's happening because in your subconscious mind, you still don't think you're good enough. And you still are so fearful of this person not choosing you. And that is the energy that's going to actually repel them, not attract them. Because that's an icky feeling to think I'm responsible for how this person values themselves, you know? Exactly. My value and my worth comes from within. And this person is a choice. I choose this person, not I need this person. Yes. You know, that's what the energy is different. And I, I always, I use this analogy of like, you know, say I'm like a diamond dealer, right? And I have this amazing, I have two diamonds, you know, this one's worth a million dollars and this one's worth a million dollars and they're gorgeous. And then I have this guy come off the street and, you know, he's like, oh, cool diamonds, you know? And he's like, mm, I'm going to pick the one in your left hand. And I'm like, okay, cool. Here, you have the one left hand, gives me a million dollars, walks out the store. Does the fact that he picked the diamond in my left hand mean that the diamond in my right hand has lost its value? No, exactly. it is still flawless. It is still perfect. It is still worth a million dollars because intrinsically that is its value and worth, regardless if somebody picks it or not. But so often we think if this person doesn't want to be my friend, if this guy doesn't want to date me, if I don't, if this boss doesn't want to hire me, that somehow they have, because of their choices of what they decide, has the power to determine that you're worthless or you're less than but that's not true. You're still the diamond. Nobody outside of you has the power to take away your value and worth unless you give it to them. Exactly. It's all about the power of your worth and your, no one can take away your, your love for yourself. No one can take that away from you as long as you have that secure in you. And I love the diamond reference. And that kind of reminds me of a quote that I saw that said, Others liking you is a bonus. You liking yourself is the real prize. And that is something that everyone needs to live by because regardless of what any, everyone can hate you. Everyone can not like you. You don't know why they don't. Okay. You don't know if they actually do or if it's out of jealousy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who likes you. It doesn't matter. Your own worth and your value is not going to change just because someone else does or doesn't like you. And that is something that is really hard to wrap your head around when you're in the moment and this guy is not texting you back. But guess what? Another guy will see your value if you have that value. Someone is going to see your value when you are so secure in it, so confident. And you know what? Sometimes people people will notice your value, but they know that, oh, I don't have enough, quote, money worth Mm -hmm. to get to that value. So people aren't able to 
they see you as too higher up or too much of a prize where they're not even going to mess with you. So yeah. sometimes people not even liking you is because they see your value. But it just is always so good to realize that you have to be secure in your value, your worth, your love for yourself, because no matter what an outside person or an outside thing is going to tell you, that has to stay the same because you are just getting, you're just eliminating something that wasn't right for you. It's redirect, rejection is redirection. And that is something that I live by because things can feel so bad and things can feel so bummer. Like, well, how did this happen? Like, this was meant for me. I know this was. But then a few months go by and you're like, oh my God, how, how did I ever think that? When this opportunity is, I'm living my dream life now. So it's always that you have to take time. You have to trust the process and just always, always have security in your worth and yourself. Absolutely. And, and also like that trust in there's a higher power or there is a higher plan or there is a divine plan for your life. So something that, that I do when I'm feeling that way, like, oh, like I really want this or I really want that. Or, I really want this person. And it's like not working. I have to like lovingly with self-compassion, you know, check myself and be like, well, Candy, like, am I trying to control this or am I going to surrender and let go? You know, okay. and, 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 I, and I always find when I'm trying to control, it never works out and there's friction. But when I surrender and let go to the higher plan or to the higher power or to the divine plan, that's when things sort of seem, seamlessly comes it comes in. And one thing I say is like, you know, anything that's not divinely meant for me, I lovingly let it go. That is so, so then, said. Right. So then it's not up to me to, to, to try and manipulate and control. And of course it's not conscious. I'm not sitting here like, how can I manipulate this situation? No, we all just think, well, if I do this and I do that, then that'll happen. Cause we think that we're trying to, you know, get something done or get someone to love us or get someone to like us or get someone to choose us. It's just human nature to do that. You exactly. know, it's not, it's not like I'm sitting there, like, let me control and manipulate. It's just how we operate. But when you kind of sit back and say, well, why isn't this working out? You know, is there something for me? And like, it's another thing I, I heard it somewhere, but I kind of switched a little bit. Like, you know, when I pray, you know, God, infinite intelligence, whatever resonates with anybody listening. Um, the answer is always yes. It's either yes, and you get it. Yes, but not right now. Or yes, but I'm going to give it to you in an even better way. That's and the, so and the only reason why I won't receive it is if I then get into, well, I want to control how, and I want to control when, and I want to control where, and then I mess it up myself. <laughs> yes. And because it, it's, it's so funny that you said that because it's so true. We sabotage our own future and our own mm -hmm. happiness by trying to plan so much. Like, let go. This is why I always preach believe in a higher power, whether it's God, whether it's the universe, whether it's, I'm so sorry. Whether, no, go ahead. Whether it's, um, whatever you choose to believe in is what's going to bring you happy. Like that is where you can let go. When yeah. you believe in a higher power, that's when you're able to let go. But when you spend too much time planning, like again, like people have crushes and mm -hmm. people find themselves planning like, Oh, if I say this, maybe they'll like me or they'll want to take me on this date. Babe, he will take you if he wants. And guess what? If he does, he does. If he doesn't, there's something better for you out there. But let go rather than trying to fixate on something so much because it's really easy. Again, like you said, you're not consciously trying to like sabotage yourself. But those things happen where you're like, oh, my gosh, I kind of was planning too much. I was kind of trying to lay everything out. And, and when you find yourself trying to plan someone else's actions to you, that's when you have to just stop because it's yes, there's free will. And if. Again, if someone's not willing to or an opportunity is not willing to come to you, it's because there's something better out there. And I know it feels like, oh, but he's so sweet. Oh, but he's so cute or <laughs> or she's so nice or I know they're meant to be my friend. OK, if they're meant to be your friend, they will stay in your life. But right now, just do your part and let go. Stop fixating on it. Stop letting it take up 24 seven of your day. Just let go and enjoy yourself that's when you will attract the right things to you. Exactly. And and I love that you brought up free will because 
when you, we are in that sort of manipulate, control, coerce, you know, mode that we don't even like consciously realize we're in, we're actually blocking that person from show it, from showing up for us in the fuller way, you know, because we're not actually letting them express the version of themselves fully because we're so trying to control and manipulate the version of them that's showing up. So we're, so we're blocking it. And it reminds me of, um, cause we're talking about cliches and stuff. There is like this one story where like the guy's like, I really want a new car, really want a new car, but his old car is like in the garage. And then his wife's like, well, why don't you get rid of your old car? No, I can't, I can't, I can't. I really want a new one. I want a new one. And then the moment he gets rid of the old car in the garage, he gets the new car, you know, mm -hmm. it's because he created the space for it to come in. So yes. it's usually when we're holding on to this old thing that we think we want so much or we can't get rid of it's taking up divine space for what's really meant for you so if you really want that loving relationship but you're holding on to something that isn't working where is the space for the new love to come in you know it's like if you want you know abundance to come in but you're nickeling and diming and you're hoarding and you're scrapping because you are in scarce mentality mentality then where is the energetic space for your abundance to come in Exactly. You have to kind of clear that space out energetically to invite the newness in. Definitely. Abundance is a huge word that is super important. Well, there abundance, just abundance as a whole in your life or being grateful for your life, love, happiness. You have to just feel abundant, even if you don't, even if it's not your reality where, okay, exactly. you don't have a lot of money right now, but feel abundant. How would you feel if you had all this money? You would feel more calm and feel those feelings. And that's just so perfectly said. And I love how you said that about the car example, because it is so true. Once you close the door, lock the door and keep that shut, that's when another door will open, but don't unlock that door again. Why would you unlock that door again? <laughs> keep it shut and let, and let the other door open for you because it, things attract to you and things will come to you. That's right for you when you let go and you will attract the right things to you, but you can't keep on to those negative things, those things that are making you not grow anymore. They're making you feel small. Those things are not going to allow you to get those new opportunities and those new people and the new love and happiness in your life. So Absolutely. I love what you said. Yeah. And I remember like, I used to think like whatever thing, like you have to think like wealthy people, think like rich people. How do they think? And it always came across as like, well, are they thinking about investment and dividends and retail property? But it's not that. It's like a wealthy person just always thinks, well, I'm always supported. Like money is always there for me. So I can, you know, do what I want. I can go where I want. I can buy what I want. But the essence is I'm always supported. Yes. So really what it means to think like a wealthy person is that no matter what, I'm always supported because that's the feeling you really want. You want to mm -hmm. know that you are supported. You want to know that you're safe. You know, money and wealth gives us a sense of safety. So that's what it really means to have, um, to think like a wealthy person or a wealthy mindset. It's not like, let me go invest in this dividend, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to get these returns on these EFTs. Like, no, no, no. It's, wow, I get to do what I want because I'm always supported. Exactly. Wow, I get to feel relief today because I know that I'm safe. And when you start feeling internally, like we were saying before, embodying the wish fulfilled, which really is the feeling, because it's not so much that you want money. It's that I want to feel supported. I want to feel safe. I want to feel relief. Yeah. I want to know that everything is good. Definitely. That's really what we want, right? And so when you start to have that feeling through, like you're saying, you know, seeing the birds and like, oh, like I love the birds, you're getting that feeling state of, I feel good. Everything's okay. There's so much abundance in the world. And then once you get to that feeling state, then that's when the money comes in, the opportunities come in, the divine ideas come in, not so much because you're, you're having these strategies in your minds, but because you're living in the state of, I'm good, I'm supported. I'm safe in this world, you know? And that's really when I realized what, like, you know, manifestation really was. It was like, in there, like, the feeling is the secret. You have to feel it. And I was like, what? But then I, when I realized, I did this one thing, like, this one experiment with manifestation. I was like, all right, I really want to get some more just, like, disposable income. I want some more money. And I said, but what will the feeling be when I get it? And, it, and I was like, it'll feel like freedom. 
So I wasn't concentrating on wealth at all or money. I would just walk every day and I'd be like, I am so free. I love being free just out in nature, looking at the sky, looking at the trees. You know, I was in a good place, but I wanted that overflow. I wanted that extra just, you know, F you money, right? Just do whatever I want to do with it. And so I would walk and I'd be like, I am so free. I love being free. Thank you, God, that I'm free. You know, open the way for my freedom. I love being free. And then I ended up manifesting an extra 13K, like after a couple of months of this. And that's when I realized that manifestation is just making your consciousness, which is the invisible, evident in your world. And the way that happens is just, you know, I was conscious of being free. But the way freedom, because you can't touch freedom, it's, it's invisible, it's just a feeling. But the way that freedom manifests in our reality usually is through money. I have the money to, that's why it's called financial freedom. I have the money to go where I want. I have the money to choose the clients I want. I have the money to buy what I want, you know, and, and for us as human beings. So our divine part of us is feeling free, but our human part of us experiences wealth. And that's when it clicked. I was like, oh, duh. Like, that's what it is. So that's why when I have self-love, the intangible, the consciousness, well, how does that show up in the world? Healthy relationships with family, healthy relationship with coworkers, healthy romantic relationships, because I am love. Oh, my gosh. That is so perfectly said. I love your examples and everything. And that just makes me, like, reminds me of something that I saw where, where, whatever you're wanting, what are you wanting? What's behind the physical? Again, you, you were of course wanting extra money, but like, what is it for? It's for the freedom. It's for the safety. So look beyond the physical thing, look beyond the physical thing or, and that's where you're going to find, that's when you know what to manifest. For instance, you're wanting freedom and you're wanting safety. And when you're able to actually dial into feeling of, okay, I want to manifest freedom and safety. And you're just feeling, I feel free. I feel relaxed. I feel everything comes to me is when you're going to subconsciously start manifesting the physical things such as money and opportunities. So I love how you said that. And everything was so, so true where you truly will manifest the physical when you go through what is, what's behind that. What's the feeling of it? Just like freedom. So I love that so much. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Jaden, this has been such a beautiful time. I know that my cup is running over. (laughs) So, so good. So good. So I just have a couple more questions and then we'll wrap up. Um, What is one thing that you would tell your younger self from from all of the wisdom and all the knowledge that you have now? What's something that you would tell your younger self if you could go back and talk to her? Wow. I would tell my younger self that, again, cliche, but things are cliche, whether you can listen to it or let it pass in your head, but everything passes. And because things in the moment feel so bad or it feels like such a big deal. Like I can think of, think of things where I was in elementary school where I was just so scared about something. I'm like, oh my gosh, looking back, I'm like, I understand why my parents were telling me this is not a big deal. But <laughs> now I that's why I carry this into me where I'm like, I have a worry now. And I, I think about myself when I'm 80, she's going to say that is such, that was such a small thing. Like, why are you wasting your day worrying about it? Every little thing that you worry about is going to build up. Your cup's going to overflow with worry and you're going to be ultimately so unhappy. So let things pass. Even if it's not in your your control, whether you have a mean coworker or something's not working right for you for your job or just things are not going your way or your car broke down. This is all going to pass. You have to think of yourself, like look at your problem from like, not even a bird's eye view, but like a universe view where like you are just in the sky right now. Look at how tiny you are and how tiny and miniature your problem is. Your problem, and I hate to say it, but is most likely not the worst thing in the world. There, I'm not, not validating my own problems. But what I do is I kind of think someone else is having it worse out there. I'm happy that at least it's not that bad. And of course, I would never wish someone else to have it that bad. But even someone else's problem, theirs isn't even that bad, like compared to something else. And that kind of 
humbles you and puts yourself into a perspective that, okay, you know what? I'll get through this. Like my feelings are valid. Let me feel how I'm feeling. I'm not going to push my feelings to the side and and just ignore them, but I'm going to feel how I feel. Yeah. I'm going to remind myself, this is just such a small part of my life. This is such a small problem. This will pass in a day, a month, Mm -hmm. a year, 10 years. I'm not going to be remembering this or even if I do, it's it's going to be so far gone where there's going to be a whole new life for me already. I love that. I love, you know, validating your own emotions while keeping a healthy perspective. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I absolutely love that. Um, let's see. So if there was one thing that you wanted to leave us with, what would it be? If I could leave a, your lovely audience with something, I would say to really – use this time for self-love. There is no better time than now. Stop saying, oh, when my job gets a little more slowed down, then I'll be able to spend time for myself. Or when I have more friends and I'll be able to like feel better to kind of start my self-love journey or when I'm not as busy. No, the time is now to start your self-love. There will never be a right time. And I find myself catching myself saying, I'll start this when, no, Start now, even if that means taking 30 seconds to meditate, 30 seconds for a little self-care thing to do, whether that's skincare or taking a shower and incorporating something new. Like, take this time for yourself. Start now. This doesn't have to mean you have to dedicate your whole day to it. This means dedicate up to five seconds, 10 seconds, an affirmation. Even a simple affirmation is one step closer to becoming a better and higher version of yourself rather than thinking, oh, just the all or nothing mindset, because the all or nothing mindset is going to keep you stuck at the same place because Mm -hmm. of course we don't want to do everything. So we're going to do nothing. No, (laughs) if your day is not going great, it's not a waste of the rest of the day. What's happened has happened now move on and you can create a better day from there. It's all about your mindset right now is the perfect time to start Again, you don't have to dedicate your whole life to this, your whole day to this. Do one little thing such as an affirmation. A little is better than nothing. So just start now. And this, every little thing will add up. Again, if you start affirming every single day to yourself, you're going to look back and think, wait, I started affirming this and this actually happened. Yeah, it's because you took a little bit of time and I was starting to believe it. You don't have to do 10 hours of self-care, working out, <laughs> eating health, just start one little thing, one little thing, because one little thing is better than nothing. 100%. I love that. And what came up for me when you were talking about the one little thing and then you sort of look back on it, that's really how you build self-trust. Trust in yourself that, you know what, I can actually create a different life. You know, I can actually you know, feel a little bit better. And that that feeling a little bit better comes from me, you know, comes from me taking a beat, comes from me doing the affirmation. It doesn't come from getting the text from the guy or getting that like money in the bank. It comes from me, you know, and that's really the essence of what we've been talking about is that everything is within and it comes from ourselves. Like even when I said I manifested the extra cash, it didn't come from the extra cash. It came from me feeling different. You know, and that's really what it's about when you love yourself and when, and even taking those little moments, I love what you said, you know, just doing an affirmation or a little bit now, what you're really saying is I'm worth it. I am a priority. You know, one of my favorite affirmations is my own well-being is my best and first priority. And that really shifted for me because I used to really think about how everybody else felt first, what were their needs, what were their wants. And I sort of wasn't even on the list, <laughs> you know, I, wasn't there. Even- I understand that <laughs> on the bottom. I just wasn't on it. Like, You're like, well, where it, I don't even see my, my name on there. Candy wasn't even there. Right. <laughs> wasn't even a check, right. Um, but now I'm like, I'm on the top. Now I think about, well, how does this experience make me feel? What do I need in this moment to feel supported and to feel safe and to feel taken care of and to feel loved and just to feel okay? You know, so I I absolutely love that. So everything will be linked down below in the show notes in the description box. But Jaden, do you want to share with us where we can find you and connect with you? And definitely um, shout out your podcast as well. 
Definitely. Thank you so much, Candy, for having me on. This has been such a lovely chat. And first of all, I feel we are so alike. And I know your listeners are going to feel so motivated after this session. But um, thank you so much for having me on. Again, I'm Jaden Haley, the host of the wellness podcast, Busy Yet Pretty. And you can find um, my socials at J-A-D-Y-N, Haley, H-A-I-L-E-Y-Y. So you can find me over there. And then I'm on TikTok. If you search up Busy Yet Pretty, I'm on Apple, Spotify, everywhere. But thank you so much for having me on. This has been so lovely. And I hope your listeners know that they are so worthy. There's thank such you. a beautiful life out there for them. It's in their hands. And they, I, I, I'm so proud of them. I know, I know <laughs> they're taking – just listening to this episode is already a step towards your self-love journey, towards becoming the best version of you. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for having me on. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Jaden. And um, like I said, everything will be linked down below in the show notes. You can also grab our free self-love guide, check out our courses, Patreon, and shop the Soft Girl merch as well, you guys. So with that, thank you so much for everyone for listening and watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share because your journey to self-love is always better with a little bit of support. Thank you so much, Jaden. Thank you. Ready to unlock your true potential and manifest the life of your dreams? Then I've got something super special just for you. Our mind-blowing self-love and manifestation courses. Picture this, a journey of self-discovery where you'll find a deep well of self-love and acceptance. Say goodbye to self-doubt and hello to unshakable confidence. Our courses are designed to help you embrace your worthiness and tap into the incredible power of self-love. But that's not all. We'll also dive deep into the transformative world of manifestation. You'll learn proven tools and techniques and strategies to align your thoughts, beliefs, and actions with your wildest dreams. So get ready to create the success, happiness, love, and abundance that you deserve. So what are you waiting for? Head over to candywashington.com backslash courses to get started. Again, that's candywashington.com backslash courses.